Guys, over the past four years, I have earned money strictly online working from South Africa. I haven't worked for anyone. I haven't had a boss. I haven't had a nine to five job. I haven't, been, have, I haven't had to go to a specific location. I literally just sat at my desk and worked on one specific business model. Now, the majority of my income over the past four years has come from one business model called dropshipping, which is a form of e-com where you're basically selling products online, but you don't hold any stock or inventory, right? And in this video, I wanna pretty much take the last four years, compress them together, and kind of give you guys the best lessons I've learned over the past four years, especially if you're trying to make money with dropshipping. Now, before you click off this video, if you're not into dropshipping or e-com, just know that these lessons can apply to any business model, specifically in the online world, because when it comes to online work, a lot of the businesses are very, very similar in terms of the principles that actually get them to work, right? So again, I've made money over the past four years, been able to move out, get married, move to Cape Town. And even over the past week, I had it on one of my online stores across two or three different stores, hit over a hundred thousand Rand in a single day. So there's definitely been a lot of growth and I'm not, it's not like the money that I've earned has helped me to just get by. No, it's helped me make some awesome decisions and create some very fun experiences, right? So with that being said, I want to walk you guys through five lessons that I've learned over the past four years that will definitely help you in your journey, right? So I've got them written here up on my laptop and I'm going to walk through each one of them with you. So number one is I said, start small but test big, right? So what do I mean by this? So when I say start small, but test big, I literally just mean that I think when people get started with dropshipping, I don't think they realize the amount of volume and work it actually takes to get a success and find those winning products, right? So a lot of times you'll hear things like, oh, you know, you just start an online store, kind of launch some ads and you'll make money. There is quite a bit more that goes into it than that, right? So when I say start small, but test big, I mean, you're gonna to have to test a lot of, essentially a lot of different products in the start. And I know people don't like necessarily hearing that, but you need to put the reps in, in order to actually get the results, right? There's gotta be a lot of inputs to actually get the output that you desire. So what I would advise is go into it with the mindset that you're gonna be marketing a lot of different products, but don't overspend on the marketing that you'll be doing, right? So if you're gonna be launching an ad on Facebook, test it small, test it you know, low, a few hundred rand, a couple, you know, 50, 60, 70 dollars, just see what that initial traction's like and don't invest obviously crazy amounts of money into products if it's not showing you any signs of life, right? So that would be my number one rule is I wish I knew when I went into it, the amount of volume that it actually took for me to get where I currently am because I'm just realizing more and more every day that it's such a volume game. You just like even today, I'm upping the volume. I was launching products this morning, spent a couple hours on a Sunday just launching ads, right? So it's so important that you go into this with the mindset that whatever volume you think it takes, it's going to probably take five to 10 times more that amount. And if you're not willing to make that commitment, then rather then rather skip out on the whole business process uh, and specifically the dropshipping process. Uh, business model um, as a whole, right? Because it's not going to be for you if you can't handle putting in lots of volume, right? So that'll be the first thing. The second I mentioned here was take imperfect action and adapt, right? So what do I mean by imperfect action? Sometimes I see people spending two, three weeks perfecting the color of their logo and the products on their homepage on an online store, right? Whereas in actual fact, those things are just simply not going to matter. They're not going to move the needle. They're not going to make somebody buy. And they're essentially not going to put profits in your product, in your pocket each month. So I've launched many products where the product page may have had a mistake or two. Potentially the offer wasn't correct. The marketing angle wasn't the best. But it's not like I was a professional and I could just pick up on those things immediately. I was taking imperfect action and I was analyzing as I went, right? So remember, you can't, you can't get better unless you're putting in those reps. Um, and you're kind of doing the basic work in and out each day, there'll, there'll be nothing for you to look back at and improve upon or iterate upon if you don't actually have something to work with, right? So take the imperfect action. Don't worry if everything's not 100% perfect. The goal isn't for you to be perfect. The goal is to be getting better and taking action on the online business each day, right? So it's so important to just note that. So be sure when you're starting off that you're not going to wait for the perfect moments or the, for the perfect scenario for you to take action. No, you have to take action each day and launch something no matter what things technically look like. Now, I know obviously you want to, at, at the, in the same breath, 
put as much effort as you can into each thing that you're doing. But there comes a point where if, you, if you're going to spend more time on trying to perfect something, you're actually taking steps backwards, I would say, um, a lot of the time. So that would be number two. The number three is something that I missed for so long in the beginning, but I got so caught up in trying to find a winning product that I did not focus on the customer or find a winning audience or customer avatar, right? So I don't know if it's because we get completely bamboozled on YouTube or through TikTok or whatever it is, but there's so much hype around finding winning products in the dropshipping space. Like it's, it's the most used term in the whole industry. And I mean, obviously for, for fair, um, I guess, rights, because it is a massive part of what makes people money with dropshipping. But what happened with me is I was learning, I was just focusing so much in on the product, the product, the product that I missed the audience behind the product that was actually going to be buying that um, buying that product. So remember the customers, they're not even concerned about the brand or the color of the, you know, the logo, like I mentioned, or anything else. All they want is the end product that the, that the product's going to give them or the end results or the end solution that they're going to get, right? So they're not buying a posture corrector because it's black and it's got, you know, two zips on the side. No, they're buying a posture corrector because it's going to help them with their posture. It's going to help them prevent back pain and potentially, you know, medical bills down the road. So you have to think of the not just the product, um, but you have to think about the audience that's buying the product and essentially what the product's going to be doing for them. So if I'd focused in way more in the beginning on just selling the solution, just explain to people, don't care about the specs. Not, I'm not saying you can't include the specs in your product page and things like that. Obviously, that's a very important part, but don't get caught up in just selling, you know, features of the product. You have to sell the benefits and sell to the audience and the customer that's actually going to be paying for the product. So Take that as you will, but just know that you can see results a lot quicker if you focus on the customer more than the product. And then last, well, number four, second, second last would be, I would, I wish I had started building more in public earlier, right? I don't know what it is about dropshipping specific, but I've seen it with other business models, people doing SMMA and various different business models is that the moment you start putting yourself on camera, the moment you start tracking your journey publicly, and I, I haven't even done this insane amounts, but the fact that I that I started posting on YouTube two, three years ago, well, it was actually just over two years ago, I immediately noticed the difference in my intensity in my work, uh, my work ethic and my, my vision behind what I was doing, right? Because all of a sudden, if you start posting about something and you're authentic about it, you're showing your victories, you're showing what's not working, you're showing what is working. And I've tried to be as transparent as I can right from the beginning where I've showed products that haven't worked and, and all the rest of it is that it builds trust in with an audience. And not only that, but it gives it, it keeps you accountable. And guys, I'm telling you accountability, especially with online work where it's so easy to just slip back into the comfort of a nine to five. I've seen it so much. People are like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to make it work. But their nine to five job has them so comfortable that they don't really feel like they need to break out of it. The moment you start posting content online about what you're doing and documenting your journey, even if you're just taking videos for yourself and not even posting them, but you know, post them at a later stage or whatever it is, even that act alone of just that constant feedback, it's going to drive, it, it, it puts you in the limelight and it just makes you start performing better. I don't know what that switch is. Probably need to look a bit deeper into kind of the ins and outs of that. But um, yeah, that's been that, you know, I, I think if, if I could go back, I would almost want to kind of document the whole thing and really show things from, you know, from a, from like the inside, you know, look of, of everything. Because I, I just strongly believe if you're building in public, um, you know, and we come from a generation where people are so scared to speak about money or maybe not our specific people in their 20s, but, you know, elderly people can be a very afraid to speak about income and numbers and figures and stuff like that. But you can still be a very private person if you're just talking about finances. Finances is just one per part of a person's life. There's a lot more to life than just money and the amounts that somebody earns with a specific business model. So don't get boxed into thinking that's like a holy grail that no one can ever speak about. No, I'd actually say it's it's healthy to speak about it and the more open you can be about it with somebody it can actually benefit you a lot so keep open about it and uh yeah build, build in public if this is something you want to do and then last but not least i said just think long term but act daily and when i when i say this i mean like if i look back 
<clears throat> I think a lot of the times when I felt discouraged is when I was I was thinking too long term but not acting enough daily or I was trying just getting burnt out in the day to day tasks but not keeping that long term vision in my mind right so there's a fine balance between understanding where you're wanting to go and obviously it's different for everyone people see you know maybe three six twelve months in advance some people see like two three years it's obviously very different from person to person but I think the main the main takeaway that I've seen with the whole goal setting thing is be sure to have those long-term goals, but be super dialed in with the day-to-day -day actions because you can get very caught up in thinking super long-term and then kind of forget to take the day-to-day -day tasks that are actually required to get there, right? So yeah, guys, I think I have I remember, what, I'll actually leave, this, leave you with this key, but I remember getting a journal like a year or two back. Uh, my wife actually got that for me as a gift. It was called the Finishers Journal. It was like a year-long journal. And there was a lot of things in there, but the one thing I took away is that each Sunday when you opened up the journal, they would uh, greet you, you were greeted with a page and it was titled, what's your big three for the week? So you would write down your three most biggest tasks for the week and there would need to be needle moving activities. So not just like, oh, go gym once and then, you know, go for a run or work a little bit on my business. No, it needs to be three things that if you do those three things that week, it's going to move your business forward as much as possible, right? And I remember stacking those on top of each other, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, 10 weeks, 15, 20 weeks of just stacking those big three tasks each week, um, week in, week out. And there's no, there's no way you can continuously take aggressive action like that and not get to an end goal that's somehow satisfying for you. I'm yet to see somebody knock out the boring mundane tasks day in and day out and not after three, six, 12 months of doing that at least find themselves in a slightly better position. It's just not possible. You do, you, you're doing too much of the work to not see results, guys. So yeah, hope this helps. Just to recap, I'll say these five to you. Start small, but test big. Take, you know, start small, but test, and just know that it's a game of intense volume and that you're really gonna need to up the volume if this is something you wanna do. Number two, take perfect action and adapt. Take imperfect action and adapt. So go for it, launch the product and iterate as things come right number three focus on the customer not the product understanding that you're selling that end result to an actual customer who's going to be buying that product on the other side of the screen so something to think about number four build trust and authority or at least start building some sort of online presence and accountability around what you're doing if you have people watching you whether it's people who are supporting you or even haters they both do the same thing and not the same thing but they both can give you the same amount of energy if you channel it correctly, right? So having people who are supporting you are like, keep going, keep going, keep going. And even having those haters are like, oh, this guy's maybe scamming, this guy's working on a business that doesn't work, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that. It's all fuel that you can use to channel to where you wanna actually be, right? And then last but not least, think long-term, but act daily. So just find that balance between saying, you know, this is my long-term goals, but I have daily tasks that if I, I'm gonna, you know, crank, crunch these tasks today, hit these tasks out as I know these steps will get me to where I want to be, right? So guys, hope this has been helpful. This is just a kind of, you know, I'm trying to provide value in terms of compressing the, the, the period it takes you to get from where you are to where you want to be in terms of your financial goals online. And I think if I can give you some shortcuts, I know there aren't shortcuts, but if I can give you information that can help you shorten the amount of time it takes or lessons that I've had to learn, then I'm super happy that that makes me um, makes me think it's all worthwhile if somebody else is benefiting as well from the journey that I'm on. So guys, with that being said, hope you have an amazing week. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. I will for sure see you in the next couple of weeks. Black Friday, Cyber Monday is coming up. Got some cool things planned. So yeah, looking forward to it. And I will chat to you soon. Peace.